Current events, current events, current events. Um, the new ruling on abortion. Brian Laundry. Um, what else? Uh, lawsuits against uh, Kern County by the biological parents of Orrin and Orson West, Sincere and Classic. And there was something else, drawing a blank. But let's start with the ruling on the, I know my tape. Let's start with the ruling on abortion. Um, I was watching the news this morning when that actually was released initially. And I sort of felt like the wind had been knocked out of me. Why? Because it's a, it's. Abortion shouldn't be a political issue to begin with. That's how I feel. Uh, it's, it's a medical procedure and it is, uh, you know, where it involves doctors and, and uh, hospital stays sometimes or, you know, um, I just feel like this is... Uh, just a terrible thing to have as a political um, thing to debate over, pro-abortion. It, 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 it seems really crazy to me. When you step back from it, you've got people fighting, some believing, actually believing what they're fighting for and others not believing what they're fighting for. But they're going to fight for it regardless because of the party that they're with. And... Leading up to this, there was a lot of propaganda out there, um, anti-abortion propaganda that was sort of saturating the social media, um, new, mainstream uh, news, um, where you had people on college campuses, this became very popular, people on college campuses showing video of late-term abortion and the, and what actually happens during late-term abortion, which is gruesome. Um, abortion uh, where babies fully formed and they actually kill the baby in the womb, break it, break it. Um, and then these doctors were exposed for selling baby parts. They found a pile of dead babies. Um, there was another story about a doctor that was laughing as a baby was actually alive and then he just let it die. Um, all these horrifying stories. And the way the media does this is that they promote this so it feels like it's everywhere, it's everything, all the time. They did it with COVID. They did it with uh, the insurrection. They did it with um, the riots. The protests. Um, there were way more cities that had no protests uh, than the ones than having protests and riots. But they f zoomed in 24/7, riot, 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 um, pointing fingers and things like that and, and it was 24 7 and same with the insurrection all of a sudden you're feeling like oh my god is our democracy stable like what's happening here because the perspective is lost okay the perspective is lost same thing happened with abortion abortion is not an epidemic women aren't lining up at abortion clinics uh, multiple times with their legs open. Hey, doc, take this one. Hey, doc, take that one. Um, ha, 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 have a good day. Slap. That's not what happens with abortion. And I've never heard of anybody being happy about an abortion. Abortion, for all of the women that I have known, all of the women that I have read, read about, all of the, including the case that was formed Roe versus Wade. Yes, she later claimed, I wish I'd never had an abortion or, I, or something to that effect. But it was because women feel, feel something after an abortion. It's a difficult decision. 
It's difficult process to go through. You know what you're doing. And whatever the circumstances, it hurts for the rest of your life. You have to live with that. And for women who have had abortions, it's no different than someone who miscarried. It's very, very painful. And so to, to make it sound like it's an epidemic, to make it sound like it's just women running wild with their legs in the air, uh, being immoral and spreading their legs and unprotected sex and again falling, falling on the women, um, I, I just felt like, like this was uh, a punch in the gut because it's on the heels of all this propaganda. And of course, nobody likes that propaganda. Nobody likes that video. So there's ways around it. Take it off the table uh, as being a political issue, number one. Do you get to decide if you have a hysterectomy? Do you get to decide if you have a vasectomy? Do you get to decide if you get breast implants and, and, and all of these other procedures that, that uh, you know, yeah, you make that decision. You make that decision. You're terminating a life if you have a vasectomy. You, you won't have any children. If you have your tubes tied, um, you're preventing a life from forming. So where does it end? Now the day after pill is going to come under fire, federal funding, Planned Parenthood, uh, you know, it's going to come under fire with these states that now, you know, are like all in, no abortion. Are you going to pick up the slack for mental health for children who are raped? who are, have, uh, are forced to have a baby in, uh, in incest, um, are you prepared to, as a state, pick up the slack for their mental health for the rest of their life? Are you prepared to uh, pay restitution if that child dies, uh, being so young, trying to carry a baby? Is the state prepared to take care of that child and that child's child indefinitely? Will you ever hold the, the father responsible of a rape victim? Um, I just see such a slippery slope and they were already talking today on the news about the precedence that was used in order to make this decision. And there are other big things that will also fall under that category that we can guarantee is going to go up as well and probably be ripped apart. So I just feel like women's rights have been served up piecemeal. You know, we never were just just given, uh, given our rights, period. We were just, you know, okay, you can have voting. We'll give you your voting right. Okay, now shut up. Oh, okay, we're, we're gonna let you wear pants. Okay, 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 we're going to let you go to work. We're going to let you divorce your husband. We're going to let you get your own credit cards in your own name. We're going to let you own your own house. It's hilarious. When I bought my house, I had to sign it. I am a single woman. Um, you don't see that on the, like, it's weird. So women's rights have been piecemealed. And um, where's the fairness in that? There isn't any. So there you go. And so, you know, always catching up. Women's rights are always having to catch up and, and come to pull together. And so we have one big human right. As a woman, you have some rights. It's a ridiculous uh, thing. And leaving it up to each state, um, does that mean you're pulling back on federal funding? Does that mean it's going to be harder for states who do approve abortion um, to, to do it, you know, in a way that is 
it is going to be much like it already is or is it or, or is there going to be a, a swipe at that um it's definitely going to be major battlegrounds in the political arena for uh this thing isn't sitting up here like it's supposed to sit there <laughs> so you know i don't i i just see um <laughs> This is definitely uh, a slippery slope. It can be for a lot of different areas. And um, whether it fits into the Constitution or not, um, women it, it do have a right to their own body. And women have a right to vote. Women have a, it's like all of our little piece mealed rights. This was one that we never really had a good grasp on it was fought over it's like what it's a medical procedure what in the world so outlaw late late term abortion um this is you know we're not prepared for this we're gonna find uh dead babies in toilets in dumpsters um our you know, our community um, orphanages are going to, they're already too full, are going to be twice as full. Um, women, especially young women, are going to take matters into their own hands and try to abort the baby themselves. They're going to drink something lethal. They're, they're going to do it, go backwards into these old recipes for aborting a child, ride a horse, um, drink mineral oil or whatever I'm not exactly sure what but there's all these ways that women used to try to um, to miscarry and 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 I'm hearing that miscarriages are going to be under fire uh, and lawful to investigate where is this going I you know you may not believe in abortion but you got to get the bigger picture to this um, if you hate abortion, trust me, people who have had abortions hate abortion as well. But they're not going to try to, but they also know the, the value of women having the right to make that decision for themselves. I look like I got a crooked head, but, um, so, I mean, I could talk about that forever because there's so much more to it than, you know, than just debating if you can have an abortion or not. And that's where I think people need to uh, become invested in this situation because of the, the, the premise under which this, uh, these rules were made today. Um, I wanted to, which I had it here, but I don't have it here. Let me try to get it back. Um, so on many levels, the decision today, I believe could have come out, could have come differently, but honestly, it should have been before you rule it unconstitutional. Uh, not falling into the uh, into a, our constitution, you should have ruled that this is a a right, a human right of women. And sorry, we took so long to to give you to give you your right. So, you know, as a guy, um, you can't get vasectomies anymore either because you're taking lives. You can't wear condoms. Where's birth control going to go? In those states that, you know, that are already like no more abortion. Um, the, it just has a lot of con connotations that go beyond the scope of uh, op actual abortion. So here's what each judge, each what each judge said. Amy Coney Barrett. 
She pressed on whether she would vote to overturn decisions protecting abortion rights. Judge Barrett gave no hint of how she might rule. What I will commit is that I will obey all the rules of stare decisis that if a question comes up before me about whether Casey or any other case should be overruled, that I will follow the law, applying it as the court is articulating it, applying all the facts, reliance, workability, being undermined by later facts in law, just all the standard factors, she said, said during her standard, she said during her confirmation hearing, I'll follow the law. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh in 2018 um, did not directly respond. He said it's an important precedent of the Supreme Court that has been reaffirmed many times. Neil Gorsuch uh, refused to say how he would rule. Samuel Alito, during his confirmation, he said he would approach with an open mind. Clarence Thomas spoke out. Um, and at, at his time, he, he also wasn't, you know, going to re reveal, but we all know now, right? Oklahoma, Governor Kevin Stitt signed a bill that bans near, nearly all abortions starting at fertilization. The new law, which takes effect immediately, is the most restrictive abortion ban in the country. Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis signed into law a ban on most abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy takes effect July 1st. Idaho, a ban on abortion after six weeks of pregnancy was set to take effect on April 22nd, but has been temporarily blocked by the Idaho Supreme Court. Kentucky, lawmakers overrode the governor's veto of a law restricting abortion after 15 weeks. A federal judge temporarily blocked the measure reinforcing abortion California Connecticut New York Maryland um, <laughs> Maxine Waters the hell with the Supreme Court it's horrific and appalling the Washington Post Wow Um, so I just, I just see, uh, a lot of problems down the line with, with this decision, each state taking this matter into their, and considering that it's their decision as a state to make this decision for you. Um, it, it pains me knowing the people I know who have had abortions and how, they had to make that decision, number one, because the man was in control and said, I'm not having this baby, I'll pay for the abortion. You don't have a say, blah, 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 I don't want the responsibility. Poof, she goes and has the abortion. She has the abortion because, you know, she had a crazy night and didn't expect it. This was before, um, you know, they, the day after pill or whatever. Um, but living with the actual abortion is extremely difficult. But does that mean she, she should have carried the baby for nine months and then given it up for adoption? Um, should have not had the abortion? No. The women know that that was the right decision for them. You can't force, like, ugh. And I'm not saying I don't understand the, the uh, you know, the anti-abortion people. You know, I get it. But I know that you know it's not that black and white. To, it's nice to just say no abortions ever. And I'm done with it. I, I don't want anybody to ever have an abortion. But it's not that black and white. It's It's not. There's, a, there's, other, there's so many other factors that go into that. And first of all, it needs to be given back to the women. Women need to be able to decide if, if, you know, especially if there's been incest or there's been rape, 
they get that choice. They get that choice. Um, it's it's just it's just way more complicated than than just saying I'm pro, and and I'm not. You know, there's there's a lot of other issues that hinge on abortion rights. But I I think that abortion rights is a is a, it's a woman's right. Um, you gotta you can't control everything. You know, just like forcing people to get COVID shots to go to work, but they did it and people got them. And just like this, people, you know, in those states that ban abortion are going to go elsewhere to have abortions or they're going to do something that's going to hurt them. Um, I, there's It complicates things a lot uh, by taking it out of, you know, the woman's hands. Um, and I think if you're the parent of a 13 year old and a minor who is pregnant, it's between the parents and the child. And then if she wasn't raped, if this was a, a child, you know, a young teen romance, they need to, to work it out with the other parents. But this definitely should not be a political issue. Um, it's, it's just not fair. It's just not fair. And then, because it, all it does is shift the burden and it really focuses on slamming poor people. You know, because wealthy women are going to be able to go to another state, get the abortion safely. Um, it's going to be, you know, a hiccup in their schedule but they're still going to be able to maintain. But if you've got a young girl in the rural South who was raped and they don't have the money, they got nowhere to go. Uh, oh God. You can figure that out. You, you know that the, the kind of, you have to think it through. And if you are anti-abortion, all I ask is that you sit down with a pro and con list of taking away abortion rights um, or leaving them in place and just come up with some pros and cons and be fair. Like, honestly, you can't sit there and say, I'm pro-abortion and give me one con to, to telling someone they can't get an abortion. There's always a con and always a pro to everything. So I, you know, if anybody's listening to this, I would like very much to know if you are first, I want to hear your pros and cons, why you believe what you believe, if you're pro-abortion or if you're pro-anti-abortion, and then I want you to be fair and honest and tell me a pro and a con. And I respect that. I will respect that. But when other rights down the line fall apart and when you know you see an increase in infant death uh, women's death while trying to exterminate her pregnancy coat hangers causing hemorrhaging um, babies like they used to uh, float down the float down the river um, dead, orphanages overflowing, child, more child abuse in the rural areas and in the inner cities and in poverty stricken neighborhoods. I'm going to say, I told you so. I hope I don't want to say that. I really hope I don't have to say that. Okay. Topic two. Everybody's heard, I suppose, Brian laundry's notebook um, where he confessed to the murder was handwritten he says petito injured herself in a fall while they were road tripping in wyoming 
He wrote that he did not know the extent of her injuries, only that she was in extreme pain. So he ended her life saying he thought he was being merciful. Quote, I don't know the extent of Gabby's injuries, only that she was in extreme pain. End quote. Laundry wrote, quote, I ended her life. I thought it was merciful. That is what she wanted. But now I see all the mistakes I made. End quote. Um, as far as I recall, there wasn't anything else in her autopsy that indicated she was injured in any way. So he's, he's lying. And then when he says about his suicide, I'm ending my life, not because of fear of punishment, but rather because I can't stand to live another day without her. Oh, forensics expert Lawrence Kobolinski says the brutal nature of Petito's murder does not coincide with Laundrie's explanation. He's rationalizing she was in pain, was suffering, and he was her guardian angel. She was manually strangled to death, which to me, that doesn't sound like a guardian angel was taking care of her. And I, I you know, no. Again, he's the victim. You know, he's the victim. And um, if you go to FLA.com, there's a transcript of the notebook. But, um, you know, he's saying he had to carry her back or something like that. And she was in so much pain. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Um, that So she was in so much pain. You guys were hiking. You were out in the middle of nowhere and you had to carry her. But yet you dumped her on the side of the road from the you killed her in the van or at that place outside the van no he his notebook is is full of shit i believe his family also was that's maybe the story he he told his family um and so there he was out there in the middle of nowhere feeling the heat and um uh, wow As if he, he truly believes people will believe that and be like, oh, he killed himself and he was a saint. All he was doing was helping her. He just wanted to, you know, don't they shoot horses when they're lame or, or when they hurt that, you know, they can't put, the, you know, I don't even know if they do that anymore. Really, Brian Laundry. <sighs> he's the devil he's the devil and uh okay let's look at um the lawsuits the biological mother has filed a lawsuit against kern county for 40 million she said you guys ruined my life <clears throat> it's a federal lawsuit uh, filed in the death of, this is a really sad picture of her. But anyway, she filed a lawsuit and uh, she said, I miss them being all on me during visits, happy to see me, Dean said on last Tuesday. I just miss being their mother and it was taken from me. Dean's recollections came up during a press conference in San Francisco announcing she and her mother have filed a federal civil rights and wrongful death lawsuit seeking $40 million in damages from the Kern County Department of Human Services, the California Department of Social Services, and her children's adoptive parents, as well as individual state and county officials. The suit alleges that California City Brothers, Orrin West and Orson West, were unlawfully taken from Dean and placed with adoptive parents who now face murder charges in the toddler's death. The government agencies named as defendants have been unable to address the accusations publicly. 
A spokeswoman for Kern DHS, Janus Legal, has said the gag order imposed on the criminal case against the adoptive parents prohibits her from speaking. Similarly, Teresa Meyer, a spokeswoman for the State Department of Social Services, wrote in an email the department cannot comment on litigation. Um, trial is still scheduled to begin January 25th against uh, for the murder charges. Boys' bodies have not yet been found. The plaintiffs in the federal lawsuit, Dean and the toddler's maternal grandmother, Dana Moore, had filed a claim in Kern County before suing Friday in the United States Eastern District of California. The suit alleges the biological family civil rights were violated. The plaintiff's attorney, uh, Joaquin McCoy, told to the Californian he has not yet received documents from Kern County that support certain allegations made in the federal lawsuit. I don't know why there is this secrecy, lack of transparency surrounding these two children, McCoy said. Oren, whose biological name was Sincere, was first taken away from Dean after she brought him to the Bakersfield Memorial Hospital because both his legs were broken, according to the lawsuit. Both his legs. He suffered no other injuries, the lawsuit said, but hospital staff said they believed he had been abused. Oren was placed into the care of another woman and Dean was allowed to visit him two to three times a week, the lawsuit said. Dean believed her son was in good condition and began the process of reunification, the lawsuit added. Dean gave birth to Orson, whose birth name is Classic, in June 2017. He was taken away by a Kern County Sheriff's deputy soon after he was born because they, quote, they like to keep siblings together. End quote. The lawsuit said. In late 2018, the boys were placed with their adoptive parents, the lawsuit added. McCoy said during Tuesday's news conference that Moore completed the process to get the children placed into her home. That's the biological grandmother the, on the maternal side. She says, why? Why Kern County? What was the purpose of not giving them to me when my house was approved to have them? The toddler's biological family demanded accountability during Tuesday's press conference. Dean says, which is the biological mom, you guys ruined my life. Which is true. I believe it. So there's that lawsuit in a nutshell. Um, there is also a lawsuit from um, the father, Pet, Pet, Pettis, I think is his name. Um, his lawsuit, he's filing with, there's like three different uh, lawsuits. Let's see the and the way I understand this, the bio dad is the bio dad of both Oren and Orson, uh, Sincere and Classic. There was some debate of, of if these, you know, it's going around that these two boys, um, were not. They were half brothers, but this this guy is still saying that they're both his. Okay, this article was April twenty six, and um, they talk about the forty million dollar claim against Kern County Human Services, like we just talked about. And he said, my client had not been involved in the criminal system. She was a perfectly good mother. And it breaks down all the events leading up to the boys being adopted by Trisella and Jacqueline in that lawsuit. And again, this one says that both of his uh, legs were broken. Sincere Pettis. While she was at work. The baby was at home with his father and two step-siblings. The attorney said they think the kids 
may have been playing with the baby before Sincere got hurt. So there's a little bit more backstory to um, Sincere's. Now we know it was both of his legs that were broken while she was at work. And now we also know that he was with his biological father at the time. And to uh, the two other children, the step siblings. At three months old, Sincere was placed into a foster home. Then in 2017, Dean gave birth to a premature baby, which I knew he was premature, who she called Classic Pettis, who was later renamed Orson West. Classic would later join his brother in foster care. Um, from the beginning, when 23ABC first covered the case, Dean, the biological mom, expressed concern. They did something. I feel like they did something and they know something. Um, according to the claim, Dean also expressed uh, this concern in a letter written to the Human Services Department talking about how her kids seemed scared and had scratches on their skin when she had visitation time with them after they were placed in foster care with the West. Um, she had, there's the grandmother, she had her house approved. Um, and then McCoy, the attorney, they had filed a claim at the time and the, uh, the county said, uh, we already received, or McCoy, McCoy said the lawyer, we already received a response back from the county, this was in April, saying they are not going to act on our claim. McCoy said because the county and the state are both municipalities, they sent the claim to both so they can consent to be sued. If the county accepts the claim, then the dispute is settled among the county and the biological mother. But if it is rejected, then it goes to court. McCoy adds that the 40 million amount based on similar cases, but acknowledges there's no amount of money in the world that can bring them back. This family came to me because of the principle of the matter that Kern County did not do the right thing in taking the kids away. They want to make sure this does not happen to any other family in Kern County or anywhere. So there was a claim filed against you know, those, those agencies and they declined to settle it. So it's going to go to court. So they must be feeling pretty positive that once it goes to court, and you know why? Because CPS and human resource, the human services, all of these agencies that they're suing, they usually get off the hook and they're used to getting off the hook. Little Gabriel Fernandez. There was all these social workers that were, that were, we're going to sue you. You're liable. You're liable. And guess what? Nothing happened. They didn't get sued. So let me see. Um, uh, oh, here's another story. Um, Uh, I just hate these pictures of the bio mom. I remember seeing her at a search that we had here in Cal City. And just, you know, I wanted to just go hug her. But I could also tell that she um, didn't want that. I don't think she was, um, she's still trying to process uh, everything that happened and feeling like she knew something happened to her boys, but still she was out searching. She was a part of it. Her emotions were raw. I can't even imagine, you know, um, yeah. Okay. So let me, this is another article. I just want to skim down here to what they have to say. The civil right. This is ABC Seven. The civil rights and wrongful death lawsuit filed June seventeenth by the boy's birth mother, Ryan Dean, and grandmother, names the West as defendants, along with Kern County Human Services and the California Department of Social Services. Okay. 
It alleges the foster home was a state-created danger that led to the eventual disappearance and deaths of the two boys. Um, the attorney, Joaquin McCoy, said the Congress intended with the Family First Act of 2018 to try to preserve family units, reversing the presumption that foster care is better for children, which is true. Like, they did everything to keep Gabriel Fernandez with his biological mother, and then he ended up beaten so badly over time and murdered, uh, abused terribly. But yet, here's these two, and if it's true that they took the little one after, shortly after he was born prematurely just because they wanted to keep the brothers together, wow. I mean, wow. Sincere and classic Pettis were murdered after being unlawfully taken from their mother as a result of an outdated foster care model that Congress described as having a perverse incentive to tear African-American families apart, McCoy said. And yes, that is true. And it's not just African-American families. Um, it was tearing apart families, period. But because of our... Um, you know, it, but the fact that he points out that African-American families were being torn apart um, by that, uh, yeah, I agree. Absolutely, along with a million other things. Um, so, McCoy said that prior to the 2018 law, the foster care system disproportionately subjected African-American families to trauma-ridden child abuse investigations. And that is true. And yeah, it was disproportionate. It was black families. It was white families. It was all families, but disproportionately subjected African-American families. That is true. Um, the older, let's, now this is an, another perspective of what happened. The older child was taken from his biological parents after he was hospitalized in 2016, according to the suit. Dean had returned from work to find the three-month-old boy crying uncontrollably. And that's in quotes. And when she brought him to the emergency room, it was determined he had two broken legs, the court filing said. The biological father, Charles Pettis, said he gave his son two baths that day and nothing else happened, according to the lawsuit. A hospital staff member informed Dean that Kern County Human Services would be taking the child because they believed he had been abused. The lawsuit alleges Dean had no criminal record, no allegations of abuse against her when the child was removed from her care, according to the filing. And then again, this article repeats the like to keep siblings together And this one claims the boys were losing weight while they were in the uh, West care as um, fosters. And, and uh, Ms. Dean wrote a letter. State and county officials negligently placed the brothers in the West's care so as to, and this is in quotes, so as to directly and proximate, proximately cause the subsequent death of the minor children, end quote, the lawsuit states. Officials denied the biological mother and grandmother's request to reunify with the children before they were killed, the filing says. Wow.
Police and FBI agents searched a field in Bakersfield in March of 2021. But the results of that effort have not been revealed. The district attorney has said she is not permitted to reveal any facts of the case until the trial. Let me repeat that little nugget. Police and FBI agents searched a field in Bakersfield in March 2021, but the results of that effort have not been revealed. The district attorney has said she is not permitted to reveal any facts of the case until the trial. Ooh, okay. But anyway, um, the biological father and grandfather, I believe, um, also have lawsuits. But I'm, it's not coming up. But I did, I do remember reading something about, uh, there's like three different lawsuits now pending. Oh, here we go. I, I don't know if it's going to let me read it. Um, the biological a father has filed a lawsuit. This overall lawsuit is about a long-term injustice that has happened to the Pettis family. It's really just been a series of uh, Let me see if it'll let me read this. Okay, father of Cal City missing boys files lawsuit against Kern County, State of California. It looks like this was filed in December of last year. This overall lawsuit is about a long-term injustice that has happened to the Pettis family. It's really just been a series of disastrous events that have occurred. Antonio Castillo, Chief Trial Counselor of DREAPC said. In September, Charles Pettis, the biological father of Orrin and Orson West and Brenda Pettis, Charles's grandmother, filed a lawsuit against Kern County in the state of California. The suit alleges Child Protective Services negligently and wrongfully placed Orrin and Orson with people outside of friends and family, which ended up being Trezell and Jacqueline West. When it came, quote, when it came time for the West to try to adopt the children, the Pettis family was not given a chance to take the kids back, Antonio Castillo, Chief Trial Counselor, said. Quote, the biological grandparents were not given the chance to take the kids back, end quote. Castillo, legal representative for the Pettises, says there were some initial allegations of abuse to Orrin and Orson in 2018 when CPS took the boys from the family, but he says these allegations did not involve their parents. During the dates of the supposed abuse, and this is in quotes from Castillo, during the dates of the supposed abuse, the parents weren't even present. Castillo said. Okay. So this is when the kids were visiting other family members. How and why CPS would decide to take the kids out of the custody of their biological parents based off of that is a bit of a question mark. He said the boys were taken out of the family's custody. Brenda Pettis contacted CPS multiple times, letting them know she would be more than happy to take the boys. Castillo says CPS ignored her request. Tuesday at the vigil in California City, recognizing the one year anniversary since the boys were reported missing, and this was shortly before they were arrested, uh, by Trezell and Jacqueline, Rosen, Rosanna Wills, cousin of Charles, spoke about the lawsuit. It is what it is, Will said. That's the next step that we have to take as a family because you know, it's a lot. Last month, investigators brought the boy's father in for a DNA test. Their father, Charles, in early November was brought in by one of the agencies. We don't know if it was just one of multiple to essentially have blood drawn so that they could do DNA matching to remains that either have been found or may be found, Castillo said. 
The father, the family, and the attorney have not been told the result of the DNA test of the remains. There's a lot of little nuggets in here. Um, in this, it reads like Charles Pettis is saying he was not present when the legs were broken. But in the other one I just read, he was taking care of them. And the, the two, it sounds like they're saying the two step siblings were playing with him being too rough or something. Why were they alone together? Um, I got a lot of questions, but I, one thing's for sure. Bio mom was at work. So there's, and I suppose this lawsuit is still pending, but they're going to have to get this straight. If that, if the Charles Pettis' lawsuit says he wasn't present, that the kids were with other family members. And I, rem I mentioned before that there was the DNA uh, testing. I remember that there was, an, there was only one news source was reporting that he gave his DNA because of possible remains found. And then the very next sentence says, no word on whether it matched the remains. So we're getting close to um, getting the full story. I know in my last, one of my vid last video about the boys, um, I talked about the second um, set of charges and how that read and how it's just crazy. And I think when we think we've just got it all figured out, when this goes to trial and we actually hear what they have, it's going to be sick. You know, we're going to be, I will be, I know I'm going to be shocked. I'm going to be surprised because our minds don't go to that dark place. And, you know, it's, it's just going to be horrible. It's going to be horrible to hear about this, to hear this case. It's going to be bad. But um, anyway, I want to say, Bea, I passed a kidney stone. I'm feeling so much better. Like, really, I'm, I'm feeling, I went and did laundry today. So I kind of knew that's what was going on, but I wasn't 100% sure. But it really took me out for a couple weeks, took me down. So, but I love you, Bea. <laughs> That's my granddaughter. And if you're the only one that listened to this, I appreciate it. Let me know, Bea. Call me. Call me and let me know what you think. Because let's do a video chat. All right. That's all for now, peeps.